Meet our think tank. They've answered hundreds of general knowledge questions under exam conditions before the show. Their answers are in, but how helpful will they be to the three contestants? Playing the game are Bronwyn, a retired office worker from Huddersfield, Sarah, who's on a gap year from Northwood in London, and Barry, a prosthetic technician from Eastbourne. This is Think Tank. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome, as ever, to our think tank. Hi, guys. Hello. A cross-section of the nation featuring a chemistry teacher, an office assistant and a pizza waiter. They have a mix of interests and curious specialisms. For instance, dance teacher Lucy can recite full episodes of Faulty Towers, <laughs> while Mark, the creative director of a fashion brand, hopes one day to write a journal on the fashion of communism. Will any of that prove useful to our three contestants? I somehow doubt it. But you never know. You never know. Bronwyn, lovely to have you with us. Hello, Bill. Now, you're retired, so what do you do to keep busy? Oh, lots of things. I've joined the University of the Third Age, go to talks and lectures on those, um, go line dancing. So dancing you like particularly? I love dancing. Oh, I would just love to dance with Anton Dubeck and go around the dance floor and do a waltz. It would be wonderful. Anton Dubeck? Hang on. Well, I could do Week one seven, with you, Week seven, top Bill. six of Strictly <laughs> Come Dancing. <laughs> All right, OK. Bronwyn, your strongest subjects? Well, I quite like musical theatre, but more the old things rather than the new ones. And what are you not so good at? Uh, sport, modern music, um, geography. Ah, well, Mark's your man for geography. Is it? Right. Because when you were younger, you had an amazing knowledge, didn't you? Yeah, I did at one point. I knew every country and capital in Africa. Did you? Oh, wow. I think I might still do. So, geography questions, he's your man. OK, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank Sarah, you. you're on a gap year. How are you feeling it? I am working as a waitress. Woo for waiting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I, I had a job at um, the Harry Potter studio doing the tour, um, so I learned a lot about Harry Potter, so... That's a possible specialist subject. Because yes, Peter's, of course, a, a pizza waiter as well, so common ground for you there. Yeah. What are you going to study when you do finish your gap year? I am going to study liberal arts. And lots of people do that face. They do, oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a big, long pause. Liberal arts. It's not liberal and it's not arts. It's, um, <laughs> I'm not really sure. I'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, good luck with that. Thank okay. you. Okay, nice to have you with us. Thanks. So, Barry, you're a prosthetics technician, but in your spare time you're also a referee. I've just uh, completed 30 years service as a referee. Wow. How many red and yellow cards have you seen? In my career, I, I estimate uh, 2,000 uh, yellow cards and 600 red cards. Right. Well, I've had, to, I've had to issue a couple of yellow cards yeah. this <laughs> lot. More than once, I can tell you. So your strongest subjects? I'd like to think I'm pretty good at sports. And where do you think you need some help? Uh, I think definitely English, English literature is the, the subject I would really struggle on. Hands up here, who's any, anyone who's read any books? <laughs> 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 OK. Armanel, Lucy, probably. <laughs> Best to help you there. So, welcome to all three of you. Over three rounds, then, our contestants will try to tap into the knowledge of the think tank to build up as much money as possible. Don't forget, the think tank have tried to answer all the questions to the best of their ability, whether they're right or wrong. The two highest scorers then amongst you will go through to the final. Ultimately, just one of you will walk away with a cash prize. Let's play the first round. In this round, I'm going to ask you a question, then every member of the think tank will reveal the answer they gave before the show. The correct answer is always going to be there somewhere, but any number of mistakes also in the mix. Pick out the right one, and £200 is added to your prize fund. Two questions each. Bronwyn, you're first. Okay. Here's a question we put to the think tank earlier. Which Premier League team played its final home match at the Berlin ground in May 2016? It's a football question for you. Have a look at what the think tank came up with. Starting with Peter. West Ham United. Bournemouth. West Ham United. Leicester City. Tottenham Hotspurs. Everton. West Ham United. Bournemouth. We've got a trio of hammers in there and a clutch of others. Football your thing at all? No. I have absolutely no idea. Um, but I'll go for West Ham United. With a majority uh, verdict? Yes. 
West Ham United, you say, is the Premier League team which played its final home match at the Berlin ground in May 2016. Let's see if you're on the right pitch there. You are. West Ham United it is. Well done. Oh, great. <laughs> Good guess. And from there, they moved to the Olympic Stadium. Did in, they? Uh, in Stratford. All right. Yeah. Uh, well done, Bronwyn. £200 you. goes into your prize fund. And uh, we move on to Sarah. You've seen how it works? Here's your first question. The type of pasta called orecchiette literally translates as little what? Have a think about that. Chew on it, if you like, for a moment. And let's see what the think tank thought. Peter. Hearts. Shells. Ears. Shells. Eggs. Circles. Ears. Balls. Lots of things to choose from there. Sarah, what do you reckon? I've eaten the shell pasta on many occasions, but that, that word rings no bells. And speaking of ringing bells, maybe it's ears. I'm thinking that's quite an unusual answer to see on there, so maybe they have some kind of inside pasta knowledge. Um, I think I will go with ears. OK. Well, you're saying then orecchietti translates as little ears. Let's see if you got the right answer. Ears oh, it wow. is. Well done. Yeah. Orecchietti. It's almost like you can always hear it, can't you? Mm. Orecchietti. So, Armin, you got that right. Where words come from is a particular yes, interest for yes, you, Yes, absolutely. I, I knew the French for ear was oreille. And so I went for little ears. Well deduced, indeed. Yeah. Well done. Uh, Sarah, £200 goes into your prize fund. And Barry, we'll come to your first question. According to the results of an Ipsos Mori poll released in 2016, what is the UK's most trusted profession? What sort of job could the think tank make out of that? Teachers. Doctor. The clergy. Postman. Doctor. 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 Nurse. So half of the think tank going for doctors. What do you think, Barry? Well, looking at that, it's all, all very uh, trusted professions, and uh, I would be inclined to go for doctors, as I do uh, work with them uh, every day in my uh, job. So you're saying that uh, the UK's most trusted profession, according to an Ipsos Mori poll, is the doctor? Let's see if you're right. Doctor it is. Well done. <laughs> Interestingly, the clergy and postman also came up in the think tanks list. And Cleve, you've been both of those, haven't you? Yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> but you chose nurse. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, yeah. every time. Yeah. And we care. Teachers came second, judges came <laughs> third. But of course, uh -huh. of the lot of you, the one I would really trust most <laughs> with my life. Must be Abby, because she's a doctor. Yeah. yeah. I hope so. I hope people will trust me after they watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they still do. You know, that thought never crossed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Barry, well done. £200 is added to your prize fund for that correct answer. We come back to Bronwyn for your second question. You know how it works now, so have a look at this. Since leaving the band, which is the only one of the Spice Girls, never to have had a UK number one single. Well, let's see what the Think Tank can help you with here. Peter. Mel B. Victoria Beckham. Jerry Halliwell. Jerry Halliwell. Victoria Beckham. Victoria Beckham. Victoria Beckham. Mel B. Well, again, half of the Think Tank going with one particular individual. Uh, well, I think probably Victoria Beckham. I don't think she's done much as a singer on her own, as the other ones have. All right, then. Victoria Beckham, you say, is the uh, only one of the Spice Girls not to have had a UK number one single since leaving the band. Let's see if you've got the right one. Victoria Beckham it is. Well done. <laughs> the closest she's come, in fact, was a number two hit in the year 2000 with Dane Bowers. Oh, well. Yeah. So, good faith. Thank in you. the think tank. Though. Yes. Two hundred pounds for you, Bromley. Sarah, here's your second question. Which man appears on the new plastic five-pound Bank of England note issued in 2016? Have a look at what the think tank thought about this. Peter. Winston Churchill. Charles Darwin. Winston Churchill. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. Thomas Telford. 
is a mild Kingdom Brunel. So, Sarah, fairly varied cast, but uh, Charles Darwin picked by half of the think tank. I'm tempted to say Winston Churchill because I feel like he has a sort of banknote face. <laughs> 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 um, it's difficult. I think I will go against the majority and go with Winston Churchill. So you're saying Winston Churchill appears on the new plastic £5 Bank of England note? Let's see if you've got the right face. Winston Churchill oh, it is. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. So that was uh, very well judged, actually. These are the first Bank of England notes to be printed on polymer. Yeah. Sarah, well done. £200 goes to your prize fund. Barry, we come to your second question. Who's the only person to have sung a James Bond theme song and also to have appeared during the opening credits? Let's see what the think tank had to say about this one. Madonna. Tina Turner. Shirley Bassey. Shirley Bassey. Adele. Alicia Keys. Adele. Sheena Easton. Quite a choir we've got there, Barry, for you to choose from. Yeah, all uh, very notable pop stars. Right, I know Shirley Bassey performed two James Bond songs. So on the, on the laws of probability, I'm going to go with Shirley Bassey because she's done two James Bond theme tunes. So you're saying Shirley Bassey is the only person to have sung a James Bond theme song and to have appeared during the opening credits. Have you chosen the right person here? It was Sheena Easton. Oh, wow. oh in yes. fact. Cleve, you got that one right. Do you know which film it was? I know the song for Your Eyes Only. Um, I assume that was the name of the film. That's the name yeah. of the film as well. Absolutely yeah. right. Well done. Mm. OK. Yeah. So, Barry, nothing for you there, I'm afraid. And that brings us to the end of the first round. So let's take a look at how you're all doing. Barry has £200. Bronwyn and Sarah are tied on £400. <laughs> Everything still to play for, of course. Every member of the think tank in this round is holding two questions that they answered correctly before the show. So you're going to take it in turns to pick someone from the think tank whose knowledge you think you can match, and for every correct answer, another £200 will be added to your prize fund. Now, the range of questions reflects their varied interests and knowledge. And Once a think tank has asked both of their questions, you can't pick them again, OK? Bronwyn, you get to go first. You've got the whole thing to have to choose from, so who do you think suits you best? I think I'll choose Armanel, please. Now, my question, I got this right because it is um, actually uh, a chemistry question, but it's oh. also an origin of words question. So it was two of my wor two of my interests were overlapping. So I hope you can make a good guess at it. Oh, I think I've chosen the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, you never know. Well, you I never think know. It's guessable. Is it guessable? Okay. Which noble gas takes its name from the Greek word for new? Which noble gas takes its name from the Greek word for new? I don't know what a noble gas is. Um, new, something like nuevo. Nitrogen. I don't know. Nitrogen, you're saying? Is that right? No, unfortunately. Um, it's it's neon, as in neon lighting. Oh, neon. Neo. I was hoping yes. to go down that uh, pathway. Sorry, Bronwyn, then. No money for you on that question. Oh, dear. OK. Never mind, you've still got lots of time. And, uh, Sarah, you're up next. You can choose anyone you like. Um, I think I will go with Abby. So, I know this question. It applies to a lot of things. I, I just love dogs. I used to brush my dog's teeth. Um, but this applies to a lot of animals and, and things. But how many canine teeth does an adult usually have? How many canine teeth does an adult usually have? I think they're the pointy ones. So... I think there would be four. One, two, three, four. I will go with four. Four? Yes. So you're saying you're a four canine teeth in an adult, is that right? Yes, I'll come and give you a high four. Any yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> OK, yeah, four. There you go. Yeah. So they're between the incisors and the molars. So £200 is added to your running total, Sarah. Well done. Barry, you're up next, and you still have all eight. I'm going to go for his... For that wonderful shirt, I'm going to choose Mark. Not so sure that's uh, the right idea, uh, Barry, <laughs> on this particular question. I, I work in the fashion industry and uh, this look came around at the end of the Second World War where people were ready for something new. The question is which fashion designer launched his revolutionary new look in 1947? 
Crikey. Ah, now that's, we're going back. It's a bit before my time. <laughs> Not that old just yet. I don't think Vivian Westwood's that old. <laughs> <laughs> but she's the only really fashion designer I'd know, I think. Uh, I'm going to say Vivian Westwood. Vivian Westwood. Yeah, it's a good guess. It's actually quite a tough one. It's Christian Dior. Christian Dior was the answer. No money for you, Barry, there, I'm afraid. And Bronwyn, you get to choose again and still anyone you like. Um, I'll try Ken, please. Oh, I'm glad you chose me, Bronwyn, because we are both film musical fans, OK? Yes. My question's about film musicals. Which 1956 film musical starring Grace Kelly was based on the 1940 film The Philadelphia Story? Which 1956 oh. musical starring Grace Kelly was based on the Philadelphia story? That's the one where she's with Bing Crosby. High Society. High Society? Oh. Well done, excellent. Oh, uh, yes. Well done indeed. <laughs> Contains the songs Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and True Love. I love the song with Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby when they sung... Um, what a Swell Party. What a Swell Party this is, yeah. Oh. With the glasses of champagne waltzing in and out. Yeah. Yes. Lovely. Brilliant. £200 for Bronwyn there. Well done. Thank you. Sarah, we move on to you. And uh, you can still choose any one of the think tank. I think I will go with Lucy. Our dance teacher, Lucy. Hi, Sarah. Um, I have a random penguin obsession. Okay. which started in early childhood, so I know many things about penguins. And I'm hoping, well, you know at least one, and it'll be the answer to this question. What is the largest living species of penguin? What is the largest living species of penguin, Sarah? Um, there's one called emperor. An emperor sounds like it would be a large, a large one, as opposed to, like, a small one. I know <laughs> rock hoppers are the small ones. Emperor sound like a large one, but I think there's... there's it's, like, another word, like, king or captain or something, but I won't think of it, so I'll just go with emperor. Emperor, you're yeah. saying, is the largest living species of penguin? There is a king penguin, and I was worried you were going to talk yourself out of it, because it is emperor. Well yeah. done. Well done. <laughs> emperor beats a king any day of the week, doesn't it? Yeah. And the emperor <laughs> is thought to be the world's deepest diving bird. Oh. It's in Antarctica. <laughs> so, well done. £200 for Sarah. Barry, you can still pick anyone you like. Right, I'm going to go with Cleve this time. It's a musical question. Uh, kind of a general knowledge one, so I think we should be OK here. Who generally played the bass guitar for the Beatles? Right, so, obviously, out of the four, it certainly wasn't Ringo, cos he was the drummer. So it's either George Harrison or Paul McCartney, possibly. I'm going to go with George Harrison. George Harrison? George Harrison. You say play bass guitar for the Beatles. Is he right? I wish he'd stuck with your first one. Yeah. It's actually Paul McCartney. Uh, oh. Paul McCartney. Oh. Used to play bass left-handed with yeah. a guitar that uh, was shaped like yeah, a violin, yeah, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. OK, so nothing for you there, Barry, I'm afraid. OK. Bromwyn, we come back to you. Any one of the eight? Um, I'll try Anisha, please. Anisha. OK, so this is actually an art-based question, cos I have an interest in art, particular Dadaism. So my question is, the Dada <laughs> art movement takes its name from the French word for which traditional children's toy? The Dada art movement takes its name from the French word for which traditional children's toy? She begins with D, so I'll say a drum. A drum? Is she banging on the right drum there? Unfortunately, no. It's a rocking horse. Oh, a rocking, rocking horse. Yeah. Oh, dear. OK. Marcel Duchamp was a notable Dada artist, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Indeed. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Anisha. Right. So nothing for you there, Bronwyn. Sarah, moving on to you. You still have a full field. I'm hoping that Armino might have another word question, cos I quite like words, so I'll try you. No. It's <laughs> 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 I, 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 I hope you know it. I'm, I'm half Austrian, so I know answers to questions about Austria. And so the question is, what is the capital of the Austrian state of Tyrol? The capital of the Austrian state of Tyrol, Sarah? Um, my knowledge of Austrian states and cities is limited to Vienna. I have no idea, so I'm going to go with Vienna also. Vienna? No, sadly. Vienna's the capital of Austria mm -hmm. and um, the Tyrol is mountainous and it's Innsbruck. Innsbruck was the answer we needed, I'm afraid. 
Renowned for its winter sports, in fact, hosted the Winter Olympics in 1964 and 1976. So, nothing for you, Sarah, I'm afraid. Barry, we move on to you. You can have anyone but Armanel. Well, I'm going to go with Peter for this uh, question. OK, um, this is a pizza question, because I'm a pizza <laughs> waiter, so <laughs> I hopefully you've eaten lots of pizzas. <laughs> OK, which dish consisting of pizza base folded over and filled takes its name from the... Italian for trouser leg. Which dish consisting of a pizza base folded over and filled takes its name from the Italian for trouser leg? Oh, I haven't got a clue, I'm saying. I do eat lots of pizzas, but I've never heard of that one before. So, any pizza I can for something, I'm just going to go for, I oh, know, a mozzarella pizza. Mozzarella, Peter. Um, it's sort of a type of pizza base, so it's, uh, it's afraid you've got it incorrect. It's um, Carzone. Calzone was what we were looking for because it's folded over and it's kind of like you fold over a pair of trousers. It kind of looks like a, a pasty, I yeah. think. Mm. Nothing for you there, Barry, I'm afraid. And that brings us to the end of the round. So let's see how your prize funds have changed. Barry's still on £200, Bronwyn on £600, but in the lead, Sarah with £800. <laughs> So, one of you will shortly have to leave the game, but there's still one last chance for any of you to take the lead. Barry, you can still catch up. All of you are going to be asked the same question. Two members of the think tank will then tell you the answer they gave before the show and their reasons for giving it. Only one of them has the right answer. So, if you side with that person, you'll add £200 to your prize fund. Five questions only, though, before we do have to say goodbye to one of you, so choose your answers carefully. And here is the first question. According to a 2016 survey, which 90-year-old TV presenter was the person most people would like to have as a dinner party guest? We're going to hear answers from Lucy and Cleve. Lucy first. Well, I felt that I would most like to have dinner with David Attenborough. I think he has had the most fascinating, long career and just what an interesting person he must be to listen to. So that was why I went for David Attenborough. And Cleve? Well, to me, there was only one person um, in that age group who would I would invite for dinner, and actually he's pretty much the nation's favourite, and that person is Sir Bruce Forsyth. OK, so, Lucy, you're saying Sir David Attenborough. Yep. And Cleve is saying Bruce Forsyth. Brucey. All right, who's right? Lock in your answers. And let's see what you've come up with. All three of you have gone for Sir David Attenborough. Let's uh, find out what the correct answer is. It is Sir yes. David Attenborough. Well done. well done. Other top choices were Barack Obama, Leonardo DiCaprio and Mother Teresa. So, £200 to all of you on that question and here's your next one. Which former president of the United States has the most edited Wikipedia page of all time? Abby and Armanel are going to have a go at this. Abby. Um, so I went with George W. Bush. I think people must just follow him and just constantly re-edit because they cannot predict what is going to come out of his mouth next. Um, so I went with George W. Bush. Armanel? Well, I decided on Bill Clinton because uh, he's been pretty controversial. I also reckoned that you needed a politician with a reasonably long political life. OK, Abby says George W. Bush. Armanel says it's Bill Clinton. What do you contestants think? Lock in your answers. So, Bronwyn and Sarah have gone with Bill Clinton. Barry's out on his own with George W. Bush. Let's see who's right. George W. Oh. it is. Oh. So, well done, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Other entries in the top ten of most edited Wikipedia pages are Jesus and Barack Obama. Oh. £200 then to you, Barry. Well done. Here's the third question. What is the UK's most commonly bought breed of pedigree dog? Peter and Anisha. Peter. I uh, chose a Labrador because I know the guide dog for the blind keeps breeding loads of Labradors and sometimes they don't become guide dogs. And so I thought Labradors because there's millions of them. <laughs> Anisha. Well, I don't really like dogs. I'm more <laughs> of a, a cat woman myself, although my cat is so rude that she's lucky she has a house. <laughs> 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 Um, so I actually went for the Corgi, mainly being because that's the Queen's dog, and I know that loads of Corgis came about because of the Queen, so, yeah, that's what I went for. All right, Peter, you say it's Labrador. Anisha, you say it's the Corgi. What do you think, contestants? Lock in your answers, please. 
All three of you are going with Labrador. Have you got the right kind of dog there? Labrador it is. Well done. <laughs> Jack Russell's came second, but Labradors are a very fine dog. I always say to my family, you can have any dog you like, as long as it's black and it's a Labrador. <laughs> <laughs> all right. OK. So, £200 for all of you. Well done. Question four now. In an Olympic decathlon competition, which event is typically staged first? Mark and Ken are going to try their hand at this one. Mark? Well, this takes me back to one of my earliest sporting memories, which was Daley Thompson, I think probably in 1984 at the Olympics, in all his pomp with the, the best short shorts you've ever seen, most wonderfully trimmed moustache. I think the first, uh, the, the first event, uh, I think, was the short putt. OK. And Ken? Well, I remember going to the Olympic Games and there's so much going on and it's all going on at the same time. And I thought, actually, at the 100 metres, because I thought, it's a short thing, get it out of the way, get down to the real business. So I'm going for the 100 metres. All right. Ken says 100 metres. Mark says the shot putt. What do you think, contestants? Lock in your answers, please. And what have you come up with? It's a split verdict, so Sarah and Barry say it's the 100 metres. Bronwyn is out on her own with the shot putt. Who's right? 100 metres. Wow. It is. <laughs> so £200 to Sarah and Barry, and here's our final question for this round. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, which Australian city has the highest population? We're going to ask Abby and Armanel to have a go at this one. Abby? Um, I went with Melbourne. I thought that Sydney would just be quite an obvious choice, and I know that a lot of people like to travel from Sydney to Melbourne and then actually may think that it's a nicer city to, to stay in. I think I've been there before as well uh, when I was quite young, so I went with Melbourne. Armanel? Well, I was a little less imaginative and went for what Abby thought was the obvious choice, <laughs> but I thought it was probably Sydney that was the most populous Australian city. Abby's going to Melbourne. Armanel says it's Sydney, but contestants, what do you think? And let's see. Two of you come up with Melbourne. Again, Bronwyn, you're out on your own with uh, Sydney. Might well be right. Let's have a look. Sydney it is. Okay. Well done. <laughs> So there are 4.9 million people living in Sydney and just 4.5 million living in Melbourne. So That's a lot of difference then. Yeah. You are right there, Bromwell. Well done. And £200 goes into your prize fund. So that brings us to the end of the main game. Let's take a look at your total, shall we? In the lead is Sarah with £1,400, followed by Bronwyn with £1,200. And not far behind with £1,000 is Barry. So sadly, Barry, we have to say goodbye to you. Well played. Thank you. And... Uh, we're going to give you the red card this time oh, as a referee. Quite rightly so. You've not done anything wrong. <laughs> Thanks. You tried Thank very, you very hard. Well done. Bye -bye. So, Sarah and Bronwyn, you're now going to compete to take home the money you've earned in our final. <laughs> Bronwyn, then, if you win today, how are you going to spend your prize? Uh, we love going on holiday, so um, I think it will go towards a good holiday. Who would you go with? I go with my partner, Trevor. And where will you go? Oh, I don't know, really. We've, uh, we've been to quite a lot of places. We've done South America, North America. I love going on a cruise uh, where we went to Oman, Jordan, Egypt. Sounds like there's nowhere left for you to go, is there? Oh, lots and lots of countries, yes. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. And, Sarah, what do you think you'd do with your winnings? I would do a similar sort of thing. I would, I would go on holiday, but I would only, go, I would only fly one way because last summer I flew out to Italy one way. I had no idea who I was going to meet, no idea what I was really going to do. And I ended up um, teaching English um, to kids, which was so much fun. And I definitely learned the value of a one-way plane ticket, so I'd buy lots of those. And they're, you know, they're hard, the price of a normal holiday, because you only have to buy one way. Yeah, but you have to get back somehow. I know. And that's the exciting bit. You could hitchhike, <laughs> you could <laughs> get on a boat. Yeah. So many options. OK. Well, good luck to you both. Our final is a general knowledge battle. You get five questions each, and then whoever gives the most correct answers takes home the money that they built up so far. You're not on your own, though. The think tank is still here to help you if they can. You can pick someone to consult with before you answer the questions. Each member, though, can only be picked once. And the difference now, compared with the rest of the show, is that they haven't seen any of these questions before. So they know as little about them as you do. OK? All right, let's play the final. <laughs> 
So, Sarah, you built up the most money in the main game. The final starts with you, and here is your first question. Which Irish actor appeared in the films In Bruges and Minority Report? Who do you think could help you on that one? I have an idea of the answer, but I think Anisha might know. Who's Irish that's an actor? Who would you think, actually, because you thought someone? Colin Farrell, I think. Rings a bell. Wait, oh, wait, you mean the hot Colin Farrell? Yeah. Yeah, yes. That guy. Yes, that guy, that guy. Close <laughs> to cold Colin Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hot as in gorgeous Colin. I agree with you, Sarah, I think that's right. Yeah. We'll go with him, even if it's not right. It's... Yeah. <laughs> OK, just because he's gorgeous. <laughs> You're saying Colin Farrell is the Irish actor who appeared in the films In Bruges and Minority Report. Are you right? Yeah. Yes, you are, yeah. Colin Farrell, it is. Well done. Hot, cold, doesn't matter. Doesn't it was the right answer. Yes. So well done. OK. Bronwyn, here's your first question. Which birthday did the Queen celebrate in 2016? Who do you think could help you here? I'll ask Ken. Well, yes, I mean, who, she's the most amazing lady. I have actually met her. Uh, have you? Because of my social work. It was her 90th birthday. Yes, I'll agree with that. Her 90th birthday. OK. So you're saying the Queen celebrated her 90th birthday in 2016. Yeah. All right. Let's see if you got the right number. Mm -hmm. 90th it is. Well done. <laughs> Huge celebration, of course. Did you have yeah. a street party? Did you go to any celebrations no, no. at all? No, no. Just had a quiet day watching television, yes. Well, you're taking part in a sense yes. doing that anyway. So, well done. <laughs> One all. Sarah, here's your second question. Which football club lost to Sevilla in the final of the Europa League in 2016? Football is just absolutely not my subject. So, um, who do you think would help you here? Possibly Cleve. Cleve. It's going to have to be a guess. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to have to be a guess. I'm really sorry about this. I, I should know. I should know. Um, I'm going to take a guess for you. I'm going to say it's a German side. I'm going to say Borussia Dortmund. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> Borussia Dortmund, that I think one. is what yeah, he said. Yeah, Borussia, yeah. Borussia Dortmund okay. is your answer. Yes. For the football club who lost to Sevilla in the final of the Europa League in 2016. Have you got the right team? It was oh. Liverpool. Oh. <laughs> you weren't too far off because Liverpool beat Borussia Dortmund in the quarterfinals. I was that way. OK, all right. So nothing for you there, Sarah. Bromwen, you can take the lead if you get this uh, answer right. OK. Who played the role of Richard III in the BBC TV drama series The Hollow Crown, Wars of the Roses? Who do you want to choose now? I didn't watch that, so who watched it? Lucy, did you watch it? I didn't watch it. OK, can we put our heads together and come up with some likely candidates? It wasn't somebody like um, Cumberbatch, was it? Um, do you know, he was one in my head and also... Um, Colin Firth was another one, I'm thinking, but then maybe he's a bit more... <clears throat> no, I don't Hollywood think Colin now. Firth. Well, I don't know. I'm going to go with Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch is your answer for the actor who played Richard III in the Hollow Crown Wars of the Roses. <laughs> Benedict oh! Cumberbatch it is. Where did you get that from? <laughs> well, well done. Well done. Well done. I never well saw it, so I don't know. How I've got that, but anyway. <laughs> Based on Shakespeare's history plays. Well, you may not have watched it, but you know, memory's a funny thing. You just yes. you had it there. It just popped out for you nicely, so that's good. Thank okay, you. so you're in the lead now. Two one to you, Sarah. This to equalise. What name beginning with F is given to the shanty towns or slum areas of Brazil? Peter, Mark, Armanel, or Abby can help you here. I will ask for help from Peter. I've not been to Brazil. All I know about Brazil is there's lots of sea care and there's um, lots of um, the Olympic Games, Rio. But I keep hearing the word Fallujah, but that sounds like somewhere else. But it's okay because I know it. You do. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, it's favela. I favela think I'm is what right. you're saying. Yeah. As is the name beginning with F given to the shanty towns or slum areas of Brazil. You say favela. Well, it is. Well, well, done. Done. well done. Well done. So that's two each, but Bronwyn, your chance to take the lead again with your third question. Which Dutch tennis player won the men's singles at Wimbledon in 1996? Just three members of the think tank to go with now. That would be Abby, Mark and Armanel. Abby, do you know it? 
please. Who's Dutch who plays tennis? I can't think of a Dutch player who plays tennis. What was Andre Agassi? Was he a talent? No, he came from Las Vegas. Oh, right. Oh, OK. <laughs> Can I pluck a name out of thin air? Um, you did it last time. Go for it. I'll say Ivan Lendl, but I think he's Czechoslovakian. You're saying Ivan Lendl was the Dutch tennis player who won the men's singles at Wimbledon in 1996. Have you got the right person? It's Richard Krajcek. Never we heard of him. For. <laughs> who beat Malibai Washington in the final in 1996. Right. So, sadly, nothing for you there, I'm afraid. And, Sarah, this gives you the opportunity, in fact, to take the lead. Kevin Federline is the ex-husband of which singer? Armanel or Mark can answer this one for you. Mark, can I have your advice, please? I've got a feeling you might know this more than me, but I think this might be one of the few showbiz questions that I might actually know. And I think he was... Husband of Britney Spears. Yeah, so do I. I think that too. Um, we'll go with Britney. Britney Spears. Pretty confident about that. Kevin Federline, the ex-husband of Britney Spears. You say... Are you right? You are yeah. indeed. Yeah. Britney Spears, well done. Yeah. So that puts you into the lead at 3-2. Bronwyn, you can equalise here with your fourth question. What was the first name of the man who founded the Porsche Car Company in 1931? Just Armanel left from the think tank to ask. You know this Armanel. <laughs> well, first of all, it should be pronounced Porsche because he's German. So I'm going to go for a Germanic name. Do you know? I think it's either Ferdinand. It, Ferdinand Porsche. If you think it's Ferdinand, then fine. But it, it, he was German, so a German. Is that name a German would be name? A good thing. Yes, Ferdinand is a German name. I'll go for Ferdinand then. So you're saying Ferdinand is the first name of the man who founded the. Porsche <laughs> Car Company in 1931. Have you chosen the right name? Well, you have, well done. Yeah. Ferdinand Porsche it was. was. Well Thank you. So you knew that? Uh, something in the back of my mind. Trevor loves cars and we go looking at cars yeah. all the time. Trevor's your and... partner. Yeah, yeah. and but I'm in the advanced motorists. I think you've got well, a lot so. of knowledge yeah. in the back of that mind of yours yeah. there today, haven't you? Fantastic. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. OK, so that makes the score three all. Coming to our fifth question now. No think tank is left to help you. You're on your own from here on. Sarah, your turn. The UK had a series of so called Cod Wars in the 1970s with which island country? Cod Wars. Is that like people going around hitting each other with fish? <laughs> or stealing each other's fish across borders? An island country. I mean, Ireland is close. Oh, oh, it could be Greenland. But Greenland's not a country. <laughs> that was going so well. Um, OK, I'm going to have to go with Greenland, even though I don't think it's a country. You're saying Greenland was the island country with which the UK had a series of so-called Cod Wars in the 1970s. Let's see if you have the right place. Iceland, oh. it was. Yes, of course. A series of disputes over fishing rights, mm. of course. So, uh, sadly, not the right answer for you. The score is still three all. Bronwyn, if you get this question right, you will be our winner today. So Ooh. here's question number five for you. A Game of Thrones is a book by which author? No idea. Never read it, never seen the television programmes. I'll just take an author, Frederick Forsyth. Frederick Forsyth, you say, is the author of A Game of Thrones. If you get this right, you will be today's winner. Let's see if you're right. It's George R. R. Martin. No, I wouldn't have known that. So, after five questions each, your scores are tied, so we're going to go to sudden death. As all the members of the think tank have been used up, you are still on your own until we find a winner, OK? So, here's your next question, Sarah. Which system of laws, often applied to the position of furniture and the flow of energy, takes its name from the Chinese for wind and water? Well... There's yin, yin, yang, which I know is to do with energy, because it has the symbol, I think it's something to do with how each side influences the other. And that, I can't think of any other Chinese phrase uh, that could possibly be the answer, so I'll go with yin, yang. OK, 
Okay. You're saying yin yang is the system of floors taking its name from the Chinese for wind and water. Let's see what the answer is. It's feng shui. Feng shui. Yeah. Which you probably knew, actually, didn't you? Probably. Feng shui. <laughs> yeah. Roman, then, this is your opportunity to take the lead and be today's winner. La Traviata is an opera by which composer? That would be Verdi. You're saying it's Verdi? Verdi is the composer of the opera La Traviata, is your answer. If you get this right, you will be our winner today. Oh. And go home with a minimum of £1,200. So let's see if you're right. You are indeed, it's ready. Congratulations, Roman. You are today's winner. Well done. Well, Sarah, you did ever so well. Fantastic battle. Thanks ever so much for taking part in our commiseration. Sadly, you're not going home with anything apart from the glorious memory, perhaps, of <laughs> such an epic contest. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. And Bronwyn, as our winner, you're definitely taking home £1,200 as your prize fund. Shortly, you will have the chance to add an extra £1,000 to your winnings. First, though, shall we take a moment to congratulate the think tanker who gave the most correct answers on the programme? And it was... <laughs> Ken! Well done, yeah. Ken. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> so, Bronwyn, you have one more chance then to boost your prize as you face our question impossible. <laughs> This is the toughest question of the whole show because no one in our think tank answered it correctly. So, Bronwyn, if you can do what none of them could and give us a correct answer, that extra £1,000 will be yours. Let's take a look, then, at your question, Impossible. Which diminutive actor was the male winner of the Rear of the Year Award in 2015? While you give that some serious thought, Let's take a look at the wrong answers that the think tank gave, and that will help you rule okay. a few things out. Here's what they came up with. Tom Hiddleston, Tom Hollander, Peter Dinklage, Idris Elba, Tom Hardy, Danny DeVito, Eddie Redmayne and Ben Kingsley. Eight different people they chose for Rear of the Year in 2015. It was none of them. So who do you think it might be? Well, I'm trying to think of a little actor, and the one that's brings to mind is Warwick Davis. Um, I'll pick him, Warwick Davis. Warwick Davis, he is indeed diminutive. Yes. Is he rear of the year, though, for the year 2015? <laughs> Let's have a look. This, to add an extra £1,000 to your price. That will be very nice. All right, good luck. It's Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Famous for the Harry Potter films. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that was the answer, I'm afraid. Warwick Davis, diminutive, certainly, but not rear of the year. So no. you didn't conquer the question impossible. We're still leaving with £1,200, though. That was very so nice. Enough thank for you very a, much. A nice holiday with Trevor. Yes, thank you. Good. Well, thanks very much for joining us. Congratulations. Well done, Bromley. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Do join us next time when three more contestants will see whether they can bank on the think tank. Until then. It's goodbye from them. Bye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. Bye-bye.